this next guy's name, we're going to go ahead and bring the next comic out. This is our uh, our first of our first timers here at the Improv. I'm very excited for this guy. He uh, puts together a website, uh, or StandUpOrlando.com. Got podcasts on there and all kinds of uh, information. Check it out. Everybody, put your hands together and give a nice warm welcome to Ryan Number One. Man, that is a good song to be introduced to. That is a song that'll get you going. I don't care where you are or what you're doing. You can be at a funeral and you hear that song. People will be like, oh shit! What's up, Orlando Improv? How's everybody doing tonight? Good. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, especially everybody that had a long distance to drive to get here. With gas prices the way they are. It finally occurred to me that the price of gas was getting out of control when it became more expensive to buy gas than to buy drugs. <laughs> well, I took advantage of that situation. I converted my car to run on crystal methanol. And the mileage I'm getting is insane. The only problem I have is that if I ever want to shut my engine off, I gotta take my car to rehab. But, uh, I've had the most amazing month of my life this past month. I just became a father. Thank you. My wife and I have a, a beautiful baby boy. His name is Aaron Joseph. And uh, I thought if there was ever a moment in my life that was special enough and, and important enough to be immortalized with a tattoo, the birth of my son was it. So I'm proud to say I just had his name and my name, and his birth date, tattooed right across his tiny little infant chest. Yeah. I had it done in big letters too because I wanted to give him something to grow into. And he's precious. I, I can't get tattoos on myself anymore. I got a tattoo on my back last year. It was a fucking disgrace. It's a disaster. The guy who gave it to me was tripping on LSD. And I didn't know about it. Nobody can even figure out what the hell it was supposed to be, but if you stare at it long enough and you kind of let your eyes relax a little bit, you'll see a 3D image of the space shuttle. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> Haven't been getting a whole lot of sleep lately, partially because of the, the baby and partially because my wife's been talking in her sleep. It normally doesn't bother me, except that lately she's been having these dreams that she's auctioning off livestock. You should hear her in the middle of the night. She's like, can you get a 40, 40, 40, 45, 45? Do I hear a 50, 50, 50 dollar bill, dollar bill? Try sleeping through that. It's rough. The rough thing about it is that I start dreaming that I'm buying livestock. I don't know if this happens to anybody else. Do you have this problem when you're dreaming and you start hearing something, you know, going on outside the dream and it starts filtering in and changing your dream? It's horrible. My alarm clock is the worst thing for it, too, because when my alarm clock goes off, I start dreaming that I'm... I start dreaming about traffic, about weather, about sports, about Brian Grimes for some reason. <laughs> but I had to fix that. I got a new alarm clock that's a joy to wake up to. When my new alarm clock goes off, it plays porn. <laughs> I love the porn. I love porn, I love internet porn, but there is some disgusting shit on the internet. I saw this video the other day that was so vile and so heinous that I could only watch it nine times. <laughs> I could barely hold the nausea back long enough to email it to all my friends. It was that bad. I'm not going to say what it was, but let's just say it involved a naked Rush Limbaugh and a life-size Hillary Clinton doll. <laughs> could use your imagination. I don't get all my porn off the internet, though. I like to support our local merchants. Anybody here go to Fair Villa? <laughs> Hells yes! It's a super Walmart of sex. It's, like, it's just like a super Walmart, too. They got all these departments in there. They got, you know, clothing. They got books and magazines. They got DVDs, toys, jewelry. If you count cock rings as jewelry. Um, <laughs> They got everything except the uh, automotive section, although they do have an excellent assortment of power tools. But I noticed this one thing strange about Fair Villa. 
Everything in there, from the tiniest pocket rocket to the largest inflatable sheep, it's all made in China. Every bit of it. And I started thinking about the Chinese horrible human rights violations, the, the, the child labor, the sweatshops. And it occurred to me that somewhere in China, right now, there's a factory full of eight-year-olds manufacturing vibrating butt plugs for our pleasure. <laughs> and thinking about that made me feel... safe. <laughs> it made me feel safe, and I'm going to tell you why. There's been a lot of people in this country that were kind of concerned about China being the next emerging superpower. They're afraid that one day our two countries are going to end up going to war with each other. I was one of those people until recently. I started to think about it, though, and I think China knows us. I mean, they know us better than we know ourselves. Why? Because they make all the shit that we buy. And I really don't think that China's going to want to go to war with a nation full of inflatable sheep fuckers. <laughs> I think they have more sense than that. Uh, been watching a lot of TV lately. Speaking of war, been watching the war in Iraq, and uh, I noticed the uh, the leader of the uh, insurgency over there is this radical Shiite Muslim cleric named Muqtada al Sadr, and I was wondering, how does somebody with a first name like Muqtada? get a middle name like Al? <laughs> and I started thinking, how does somebody with a first name like Osama get a middle name like Ben? And I was like, you don't see people running around here named John Suleiman Smith or Bob Mohammed Jones. Give us back our middle names, Middle East. Coming to get you. So watching the, uh, the Winter Olympics earlier this year. Anybody watch the Winter Olympics? That's about how many people nationwide watched the Winter Olympics. The, the ratings were atrocious. It was horrible. I started thinking about it. What could they do to improve ratings? And I came up with the perfect plan. They need to come up with a winter version of the Special Olympics. That would be awesome. I, who in this room would not tune in to watch the Down Syndrome Downhill Slalom? Yeah! You choked for Ryan, but not for Inflatable Sheep Fuckers. What's up with that?